The first civilization that we'll take an in-depth look at in this course is in Mesopotamia. And the reason that we'll start there is because this is where we find the earliest civilizations. This is where civilization seems to begin. It starts about 5,000 years ago, and it again starts here in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is essentially modern-day Iraq and Syria. Uh, the word Mesopotamia means the land between two rivers, and those two rivers are the Tigris and the Euphrates River. This is where we see the very, very first cities. The reason that we see these first cities along these river valleys uh, is because the area is very productive. Uh, it's called the Fertile Crescent in some circles, and it's very conducive to agriculture, very conducive to farming, and rivers pro uh, provide a lot of the essential building blocks for early cities. They are a source of water, uh, which is vital for life. They're also great trade routes. You know, we know how to build boats. We know how to build boats even back when we we're hunter-gatherers. And rivers are these great sort of natural highways that the cities can use to trade with one another, uh, to transport goods and people uh, up and down the rivers. Uh, they're just, they're great sort of natural roads. And the rivers provide fantastic protection. They're sort of like an added barrier, an added wall. So rivers are... are great building blocks for early cities for all these reasons. They're a great source of water, they're a, a trading, transportation route, and they're a source of protection. And so for this reason, you see a lot of early civilizations start in river valleys, including this first one in Mesopotamia, again, uh, by, right by the Tigris and the Euphrates River. And there's a couple different civilizations, a couple different cities that pop up in this area. The uh, first guys, the very first ones who we call the, the people that sort of start up the first civilizations are the Sumerians. The key political unit in ancient Sumeria is called the city-state. That is, a city that exercises total political and economic control over itself and the surrounding countryside. It would be as if New York was its own country, totally governed itself. Boston was its own country, totally governed itself. Uh, that's how ancient Sumeria worked. Every different little city had their own ruler, uh, made their own rules. They could go to war with one another, make treaties with one another. That's how uh, their civilization was structured. Uh, they had a couple of them. There was Ur, there was Uruk, and um, there was a couple similarities between all of them. In all of these cities, the most important building, the tallest building and the most important one, the sort of center of life, was the temple. And the temple would be on top of a ziggurat, this massive tower. The temple would be on top of it. The cities were very religious. Uh, religion really governed a lot of what happened in the city, including the government. The governments of ancient Sumerian city-states were all theocracies. Theocracy is an important definition. We're going to see other civilizations that are theocracies as well. Those are governments that are ruled by religious leaders. So the religion and the government, instead of being separate, are very, very intertwined. And the ruler, you know, will specifically say, hey, I get to rule you because the, you know, our religion tells, tells us that that's okay. These ancient Sumerian city-states all had their own rulers, and so they'd often, you know, go to war with one another and fight with one another. Well, what eventually happens is one of these city-states starts winning, you know, uh, conquers another city-state, then conquers the next one, then conquers the next one. And what happens is they form the world's first empire. And an empire, as you can see, is a, a large political unit that, under a single ruler or a small amount of rulers, that controls many different peoples or territories, it's sort of the, that the ruler rules over a, a diverse landscape, lots of different kind of people, a l large area. These are empires. And the first empire, uh, they're called the Akkadians. They're the ones that, you know, win when all the Sumerians and the Mesopotamians are all fighting each other. The Akkadians are the first uh, empire that, you know, unites the area. And the emperor that does it is named Sargon. So Sargon is the world's first emperor. He, you know, conquers this big area and rules for a while. Uh, but, you know, empires don't last forever, as you're going to see in this course quite a bit. The Akkadians last for a while, but then they fall. 
And the next empire to come up, the next city-state to beat up everybody else, is Babylon. Uh, the Babylonian Empire uh, conquers everybody else, and the leader of that empire is a guy named Hammurabi. Now, Hammurabi rules over the Babylonian Empire for quite a while, but the most important legacy he leaves us is Hammurabi's code, or the code of Hammurabi. And this is the, the earliest law code that we've been able to find. It's inscribed on this stone and it really gives us a window into how governments functioned back then and what their conceptions of justice were. There are laws in the code like if you strike out someone's eye, your eye will be struck out. You know, the code is very pro-death penalty. But it's, it's very harsh in other areas as well. One of the laws is that if a son strikes his father, that the son's hand will be cut off. So it's, it's, it's a pretty harsh code of laws, and it's worthy of a lot of study in its own right. One of the things that it reveals is it definitely favors men over women. So, you know, we can tell that in many of these ancient societies, the societies are what we call patriarchal societies. That is, that they're dominated by men, that they favor men over women. Interestingly, uh, all ancient civilizations, that is when people start settling down in cities and start farming, all of these early civilizations are patriarchal. All of these early civilizations favor men over women. That's not necessarily a pattern we see in hunter-gatherer societies. Uh, hunter-gatherer societies, things are sort of more even. There's something about farming, about settling down in cities that all over the place creates an imbalance between uh, men and women, creates some amount of, of injustice towards towards women. Why is that? There's you know, a number of different theories, but it's, it's an interesting thing to note. That it happens is true. Why does it happen? Um, that's, that's worth further. Uh, another thing that we can tell about these ancient Mesopotamian societies is that they are polytheistic. That is, the ancient Mesopotamians believed in many gods, thousands of gods, and that the you know gods would fight with one another and, and uh, in their in their religion weren't particularly concerned with the fates of people. The people had to make sacrifices to the gods to, you know, not have the gods harm them, to make sure that the you know rivers did what they were supposed to do, that there'd be good harvests. One of the ways that we can tell this and a lot of the other things is that the ancient Sumerians invented writing. They seem to be the first civilization, or uh, the first movie we've been able to find so far, that wrote things down. Uh, the alphabet they used, the language they used, was called cuneiform. Uh, this was their early system of writing, and the benefits were enormous. The, the benefits of writing, rather than just remembering everything, obviously you can pass down all sorts of knowledge uh, in a much more detailed fashion than you can just by talking to someone. Uh, you can have much more detailed records that can be shared with multiple people. So it, it enables society to become a lot more advanced and a lot more complicated, actually writing things down. So again, this is about, writing is about 5,000 years old. If you'd been born before that, you wouldn't have had to do reading and writing class, but you know, you're born now, so you do. And one of the other things that we that, that the fact that they invented writing gives us is we can read their stories. The most famous one that these guys wrote down was called the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, it's really long, but in a nutshell, it's about Gilgamesh, who's this hero who is trying to become immortal, and it's his adventure, his quest to go, you know, try to find the whatever magic thing that's going to make him immortal, and he has all these adventures looking for it, and he fails. He never finds it, and then in the end of the story, he dies. So, sorry, spoiler. So, the very first civilizations start up, again, around 5,000 years ago. They start up in Mesopotamia, that's modern-day Iraq. They are theocracies, that is, the, the government rules because they say that, you know, the gods say that they're allowed to, and they start off divided by all these different city-states, but then very quickly uh, you get the world's first empire led by Sargon, and then that falls, and then the next one, and you're going to see, again, throughout the course, the rise and fall of empires is a very important part of history.